make sure you only have ones and zeros so no worries about any other number coming in picture so it says i will have four consecutive ones or four consecutive zeros which means that you have to make sure the array which you are building if let's say four consecutive ones have occurred then the next element which you have to have to place will be a zero Although, although indirectly they have said that each sub array of ARR with a size greater than limit must contain both zeros and ones. So I am interpreting and explaining you in a simplified manner by saying that if that you have a limit, which means you have a sub array in which let's say in with the limit, if, if the array size is limit, then you can choose whatsoever you can. So I'm choosing the worst case, which means I am choosing only zeros. I'm, I'm not because the, again, the case which they have given is must contain both. I'm saying, okay, I will go opposite to you. I, for that limit array, I will choose only zeros or only ones. So let's say I choose only zeros. Then as soon as size will become greater than this limit of the sub array size, as well, it, because you know, sub array can be of all the sizes, it can be of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on and so forth. So as soon as the size will increase, I know one thing for sure, I have to place some other element for sure. I cannot wait as in, let's say this, if this is my main array. This was my limit. Let's say limit was 4 and I have placed 4 consecutive zeros. I cannot wait and say, okay, RN, I will place 1 here. I will not place a one here but i will say bro if you will not place i am saying you will have to place a one here if you have exceeded your limit you will have to have to place a one here else if you will not place a one here then this will become a sub array of length five which will have all four zeros sorry all consecutive zeros and that is the violation of the problem right so this is just the simple saying that if you have consecutive zeros please make sure to place a one if you have consecutive ones please make sure to place a zero but Aryan, what about the condition right here right here bro as you can simply see that i have to find the sum of all the i have to find the number of all such arrays which can be formed i have to find the number of all such arrays which can be formed which means i am myself building the array if i am myself building the array and i know that i have to build an array in which i have to make sure i will keep exactly ones number of ones and exactly zeros number of zeros so i know one thing for sure what is the size of my array and i will be just keep on putting the elements i know i have two options to place an element at this location i have two options either place a zero or a one so options came in picture and also out of all the options which you are placing you will make sure to place the good you will you will you will make sure to place the options either zero or one such that the condition is satisfied and conditions you can see i have these three conditions that i should use exactly zero number of zeros exactly one number of ones and also that limit this limit thing should be maintained and so i will make sure i'm just appending some element in the okay i'm building i'm trying to build as many number of arrays as possible so the the intuition part okay you are trying for a possibilities you have options to place either a zero or a one and you have to find the total number of such combinations you know one thing for sure that it will be a recursion in which at a specific index i you are trying to place either a zero or a one and then you can just simply count all the possibilities so you know that you will simply apply a recursion here and for sure when you apply a recursion usually it end up giving you again for proving and stuff you will have to prove that it will have a repeating sub problem but then it will have you have to draw the di diagram and stuff if you want to go into deep please go and decide db intuition building playlist by rmkel you will get the entire playlist in which we have gone down to very deep on every problem and explained this but this is already a very big problem so we'll just skip this on proving that specifically dp will be applied but you can easily see that dp will actually be applied here because we will for sure be having repeating sub problem it is the same way saying longest increasing subsequence kind of problem it is the same way more or less same thing again you have options place something not place something now uh we were at a point that we realized that bro i will just have to maintain that i have two possible options place a zero or a one and i have to make sure that i will maintain the count of zeros placed so far count of one place so far are in why do you need it because you have to make sure that the condition should be satisfied again i am only going about with my conditions that okay that i have to place zero number of zeros i have to place one number of ones 
so make sure again you can go either ways although you can just initialize with the very basic that initially you have placed zero number of zeros and initially you have placed zero number of ones and you can start placing something or vice versa you can also do is that initialize and say okay i have to place let's say four zeros and let's say i have to place three ones I have to place three ones and four zeros. So, okay, in the very beginning, I have options to place zero or one. As soon as I will place a zero, I will reduce my zero count. Okay, now I have three zeros remaining. Okay, let's say if I am next index, I have still an option. Let's say if I place a one, now my remaining count of one is two. Okay, let's again go to next index. Now, let's say again, maybe it's my choice. It's my choice. It's my choice that, okay, let's say if I place a one, again, if I place a one, I will just simply okay reduce my ones count so ultimately in the very end i have to make sure that all my zeros and ones count should reach to zero then i can say i have exactly placed zero number of elements exactly placed one number of elements and also make sure before placing an element make sure that you ex actually have that element right so the same way i can do it now okay uh, my zero and one i will have to maintain i saw that but there was also one more condition which is limit condition how will i make sure that limit condition is satisfied okay let's say i am putting some elements 0 and 1 how at what point will this limit condition will not be satisfied which means that if let's say i am placing some elements if the count of those consecutive elements if the count again consecutive elements can be either it can be 0 or 1 so it can be the 0 or it can be 1 if the count of these consecutive elements if it reaches limit i know i'm screwed up i have to place some other element so i realize okay i have to make sure that i am keeping track of the consecutive element again it can be either a zero or a one but rn why do you need to maintain what consecutive element you have okay rn i recognized i saw that you will have to maintain the count of consecutive elements so as to make sure okay you have reached the limit as soon as you have reached the limit you will make sure okay, you stop but why is the consecutive element itself is required it is required because as soon as you will reach the limit of your consecutive element which is the count you have reached then you will have to place the 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 opposite as that of the consecutive element so if the consecutive element is one so you will have to have to place a zero there is no other option let's say the consecutive elements was a zero then you have to have to place a one so this count will help me indicate that okay i have reached my limit so i should stop i should control and this consecutive element what what element i have been taking in this entire consecution this will help me to make sure that i have to take opposite as that of what i have been taking so far so i realized okay so again my states are increasing like anything so i i realized i have to take a zero count which means I can take the input 0. I have to take a 1 count. I have to take the count, which is the limit, just to make sure, okay, this will be in the limit bounds. I have to take what is the consecutive element which I have been occurring. And I know the consecutive element can be a 0 or a 1. So far, uh, the things have been going insane. So we realize, okay, I have... I have to make sure I will just simply iterate on this entire array. Now, one very basic thing which can come to your mind is Aryan. Um, so far, I have seen very basic stuff that you told that you will simply iterate on the entire array, right? And I know, okay, but Aryan, you never told that what is the size of the array. That's obvious. Size of the array, you know that you have to place exactly zero number of zeros, and exactly one number of ones. So for sure, you have to place exactly one plus zero number of elements in the array, which is, so my array length will be number of ones plus number of zeros. Cool. Now, in a simple recursion, what you do, okay, you go on to an index, you have, okay, you go on to an index, you have an option, either you place a zero or a one, and we saw that we have to maintain the remaining zeros, maintain the remaining ones, and also we realized we have to maintain the what we have to maintain the we have to maintain the count of consecutive elements and also the consecutive element itself whatsoever we have got if we will take this into consideration we know that the limit of one and zero if we go back to the example we will we know that the limit again this is for the problem number one and this is for the hard version let's take the easy version in consideration and we will see that the zero one and limit all are 200 so i i realized that my n is actually bounded by i 
right so if i i can easily say that my i will be 1 plus 0 1 plus zeros it is 200 it is 200 so i will actually be 400 same way ones will be again 200 zeros will be again 200 count will be again limit bounded by limit because as soon as my count will reach limit i know i have to change the number to oppose it as out of the consecutive element okay it is also bounded by limit and this count is itself too so if we would have taken this into consideration it would have still be under r1 e8 time complexity again which is a complexity usually in general but this because of adding i cannot i cannot even write my normal basic dp normal basic dp can also not be written because of this i but rn technically i you will have to write because because you have to iterate on the array itself right you forgot you are building the array and not iterating on the array. If you would have to iterate on the array itself, then this I would have been important. But here, you are building the array with the help of what? With the help of remaining zeros and remaining ones. Making sure the other condition is also satisfied. So technically, this I is not at all required at this place. Because this I would have been useful if you would have actually had an existing array in which for a specific index, you had to get some value out. But in this case, I don't need any value. But Aryan, then if this I would have been there, then you would have known na, that what is your base condition? Your base condition would be as I is equals to N, then you would have simply returned a 1. But first question for few of you will be Aryan, why you returned a 1? So for them, the answer is simply that you have to get the total number of arrays. And I know that as I have reached my end, I will make sure I will validate all the conditions by building my array and is if I have reached my end which means I have completely built my array perfectly because while building the array I was always maintaining that all the conditions are satisfied so ultimately if I have reached the end I know I have got one good array so I can simply re return a one for that specific one good array which I have got so same way but now you ask Aryan then if this is not if I is no more there then what will be your base condition so if you remembered I told you in the very beginning that I have to place exactly one number of ones and exactly one number of, sorry, exactly zero number of zeros. So I know I have to place exactly these elements. So, and I also told you that in the very beginning, I will take, okay, I have to place four zeros and three ones. I have to place them. So, and I will keep, as I place anything, I will reduce its value. Place anything, re reduce its value. Although you can increase the count also if you take in the very beginning, let's say the count of zeros is zero, count of ones is one, and you just kept on increasing it, or vice versa, you can also reduce it. So I will take, I will, let's say, reduce it. So in the very last, if my one count has reached zero, and also my zero count has reached zero, I know I have reached a very good state. I have built my perfect array because I also will be maintaining this specific condition of limit. So if this is my base case now, so we realize that by using these states of our dp of our recursion i should say i can easily get my answer so i will simply go back and simply write the exact same stuff i will have number of zeros in the very beginning number of ones in the very beginning number what is the consecutive element i have been getting previously what is the count of that consecutive element i have been getting previously and then ultimately write my simple recursive code how the recursive code will look like simply it will go on and try for the very base case if the zeros and one if it has reached the super end again are in again you will have actually call this function from your main from your main uh, class or main case then what you will call i will simply go and say okay in the very beginning i will have zero number of zeros again this is i'm calling from my main function and in the very beginning, I have one number of funds. In the very beginning, my consecutive element. Okay, I have no consecutive element so far. So arbitrarily pass any number. Let's say I pass in default, I pass in a default value of minus one. And then the count. Count is also zero because I have no such element. But you will make sure that as soon as, because you know that you always have a memoization check. So this memoization check will actually be going and checking if dp of zero one your consecutive element and your count if not equal to minus one then simply return it so yes you saw 
that you are actually checking for conservative element also so if initialize if you initialize by a minus one value you actually be getting a runtime error so rather in this case again i know the valid conservative value can be either a zero or a one because that is only the case for me so i will make sure i will pass in another default value which is not negative so if i have zero one which is the valid values the next invalid value is a two for me so i will simply pass in a two here in the base case so this is how i will call my recursive function okay now now coming on back okay base case is done memorizing mem simply you can easily memorize okay now comes to the actual main case make sure to validate these three conditions which you saw above first condition was that you will have to try to place a zero you can only try to place a zero if you have a zero in the hand so i will firstly check if do i have a zero in the hand yeah if if my zero is more than zero, which means the zero count, I have remaining of zeros. If it is more than zero, then I can easily place a zero at that location. So I will simply say, okay, bro, I can simply go and about to place a zero. As I will place a zero, my zero will become a minus one and I will, my one will remain same. But Aryan, you did not check the condition number three. Yeah, exactly. So what I will do is condition number three checks that consecutive element, consecutive element, if those consecutive element is actually a zero, make sure. I'm about to, I have checked for, do I have a zero or not? Which means I'm about to place a zero here. So if this is the array at this location, I'm about to place a zero. So I checked that if the consecutive element I have been getting, if that is a zero, how I will know that I will simply go and ask the consecutive element. This consecutive element will tell me what is that specific consecutive element. So this says, okay, the consecutive element was a zero, but I can only place a zero again. This this blue one is what I placed right now. But I can only place it if the count, because see, the count will give you the count of consecutive elements. If the count of this consecutive element, if it is less than the limit, only then I will be able to place another zero. Because if it is equal to limit, if it would have been equal to my limit, and if I, if I would have placed a zero here, then it would have been a violation of this condition that the size greater than the limit actually contains all the zeros only. So it will be a violation. So I will make sure to not violate this. So I will make sure that as soon as I will check the count of the consecutive element right now, the consecutive element is zero. I'll check the count of it if it is less than limit, only then place a zero. Okay, but Aaron, what if the consecutive element was a one? Okay, if the consecutive element was a one, then no worries to even check the limit because you are actually breaking the pattern by itself itself, right? So you will, if the consecutive element was a one, then you can simply place simply place a zero again. The zero count will reduce by one. One count will remain as it is. Now your consecutive element will now start saying okay because for the next number because for the next number but again. You know that how the simple recursion works it passes on these values to the to the next number right so for the next number the consecutive element will now be a zero so i've simply passed in a zero and you know that okay if if i was ending if the consecutive, consecutive element was ending by a one then i know i have the fresh count of consecutive element that is only one zero so i had a one but if the consecutive element was ending by zero itself, then my count of consecutive element will actually increase by one because I will have count plus one number of consecutive elements. But Aryan, if you remembered in the base case, you have passed in a zero. So in the very beginning case, you will neither have a consecutive element of zero nor a consecutive element of one. So are you saying that in the very beginning, I will not even check for a zero? No. Yeah, that's an issue. So what you what you should do is that if the consecutive element is a one, or if the consecutive element is a two, this two is only and only required in the very initial base basic first phase, because we have by default put in this condition of two as a default value when nothing was there previously. So either you can put this check or you can put a count check. If the count is zero, then you can place anything depending upon you so this is we did for okay what if we are trying to place a zero here the same way i will do what if i try to place a one here so exact same stuff what if i try to place a one here again i will only place if the one count is more than zero 
also check if the constitutive elements previously was a one and also the count of those constitutive elements was a less than limit only then place a one here as we place a one increase the count of one by one because now the consecutive one count will be increased by existing count plus one but what if the constitutive elements previously was a zero you are about to place a one then simply place a one uh, simply place a one reduce the value of one because now the available ones have reduced and then the fresh count of one has started and the same way here i will say if the consecutive element was a two still you can do the exact same operation ultimately you have tried placing both one and zero at that specific location ultimately your answer will be there just simply as you do a simple dp memoize that too with the answer and get it returned which means you will do a simple dp check which means sorry dp initial dp assigning the dp of zero one consecutive element and also my count consecutive element and also my count just assign that to my answer and ultimately get it done and return it make sure to always do the module at every step because the problem simply says that you will have to have to do a module with 19 plus 7 so please do that module now let's see the code it's exactly same as what i showed you above also that i will initialize my 4d vector because i know that my vector state will have 0 1 constitutive element and count so i have to initialize a 4d vector so i did this initialization here itself of the 4d vector and then i went on in my main case, I went on each rise with 0 plus 1, 1 plus 1, 3. Because I know, why 3? Because I know I will placing a 0, 1 and a 2, a default value. And then a limit plus 1. So as to just say that I can try for 0, 1, constant element and count. These all values. Now, this simple if condition as I showed you above also. Simple one condition as I showed you above also. And then simply assigning that to my DP again. Make sure that I did a moderate every step. I did moderate every step and ultimately this is my entire recursive code which I have already showed you and that's how you simply achieve your answer. Again, this will successfully pass but the time complexity for this will be 0, 1 because count of 0, count of 1 into 2 into limit. Same way the space because you have used a 4D DP so it will be 0, 1, 2 and limit. Now, can you improvise it? Again, as I say improvisation, I'm asking for a basic improvisation. I'm not asking a very high end time complexity optimization. Again, even if you want to optimize your time or maybe any good optimization, you will have to convert it to bottom up code. But I'm asking you by looking at this exact same code, exact same code. If I told you, if I tell you that, okay, bro, you are using this much time, this much space. If I ask you, can you reduce some space, then what you will tell or what you will say? You will simply say, okay, you are asking me to reduce a space. If you want to reduce a space, you want to actually remove some of these parameters. Like any parameter, you actually remove it. Now, 0 and 1 are more or less same way how they perform. Then 2 will be for sure required to know the constitutive element whatsoever I kept on previously. This limit this limit is actually the upper bound of my count and this count itself represent that how many consecutive element I can actually place. So rather than again right now I am just asking my recursion to try all the possibilities instead I can also do is I can try all the possibilities of count manually by myself. What I mean, what I mean by manually, manually I mean by simply trying a for loop. So what I will do is I will try for all the possibilities of count manually by myself. What I will do manually, I know one thing for sure that anything I have, anything I have consecutively, I will try to place one count, two count, three count, four count and so on and so forth up till the limit. That is how I should try placing again. Earlier I was seeing, earlier I was seeing that, earlier I was seeing that if my count of constitutive element, if it actually is violating my limit or not, right, as because I am placing some 0, I am placing some 1, so I am checking, okay, is it violating, is it, is, it, is it violating or not. Now I am simply saying, okay, I will not check this violation, I will place all the possibilities by myself only. What can be the possibilities? Possibilities can be that I am placing a 1, 0, or a 2, 0, or a 3, 0, or a 4, 0. Up till a limit of zeros. Again, make sure the, the, the number of zeros you can place. Again, let's represent the number of zeros you are placing by a z. 
it can at max be minimum of whatever zeros you are left with versus whatever limit you have these many number of zeros you can place consecutively here again initializing with a one okay you can actually start with placing one zero so you realize that you will actually try placing this by yourself which means now earlier you were actually trying and depending upon the recursion but now you have tried ex explicit for loop inside to actually handle this count but rn uh, okay it makes sense so you are technically saying that i will simply write okay the count from one count is less than equal to minimum of again to place i am trying to place consecutive zeros so i just mentioned that okay again the same way i will do for one also but right now i am doing for zeros i will say count is less than equal to minimum of whatsoever existing zeros i have versus whatsoever limit i have so whosoever is minimum i will place that many number of consecutive zeros again may it, it can be possible like i have no more zeros left or it can be possible that i have no more limit to exceed so i'll take minimum of both of them and that way i will place these many number of consecutive zeros so if i place these many again i'm trying for all the possibilities you can see i'm trying for all the possibilities so make sure i'm trying for all the possibilities so if i am saying i will place these many number of consecutive zeros same way now the remaining number of zeros will be zero minus the count which you have placed one will remain same and now as you have placed the consecutive element as zero so for sure zero will come here again your task was just your task was to simply add for all the possibilities so i'm doing the same, same thing i am trying to add for all the possibilities that's it so i did this for my answer but you will realize one very basic fact that okay it's a simple recursion right if something is a simple recursion what will happen the next step in if it's simple recursion it will simply go and again go and solve for the same again it will pass in the zero count one count and a zero value so it will again land onto this condition for loop again it will start initializing again it will start solving it but didn't you realize one thing that if you have placed some limit of count of zeros you cannot afford to place another zero after it so you'll have to have a check that okay when i placed a zero here i made sure that i tried for all the possibilities of placing a zero i which means that next person who is coming here should actually for sure place a one he should not even if even if it is not in the limit bound still he should not place a zero here why because i had already counted that possibilities below below so I realized I have to make sure if I have placed a zero previously, I should now place a one. Now place a one. Now place a one. Now place a one. So the exact same way that I will check if the consecutive element previously was not a zero, only then I should place a zero here. And when I say I will place a zero, I will try for all the possibilities of placing the consecutive zeros. And the same way I will try to place all the consecutive ones. Again, the same way. We'll see the exact same code. So you will realize again, I kept the code exactly same. The only thing changed is that okay, if the consecutive element you had been getting previously was not a zero, then you can place consecutive zeros. You will try for all the possibilities of placing consecutive zeros. So from one to less than zero limit, I will try to place all the consecutive zeros, and then this is the remaining number of zeros. Same way for placing the consecutive ones but place only when you are previously not get a one right okay and this is the only change i did exactly code remains as it is just the one more change that earlier i had a 40 dp but now because i no more require to store my count because i am doing it handling it manually so i don't need to actually store it so i can technically initialize my array with dp array with a 3d dp array and that is more than sufficient and other thing remain as it is it's just that the count as a parameter is actually lost now the time still remains same because you can easily see i will actually go on zero one cons cons element and the count which is the limit bounded by limit itself so time will still be same which is zero one two and limit and but space is reduced 
now if i ask you can you improve because you know that so far you have actually solved this variation of the problem which is 3129 and you solved it in the first go itself when you use the 4d dp although i showed you the improvised version of this example itself by improvising the space but still but still can you solve it which means improvise this you remembered the improvisation in this will actually be required in that time because i saw that the time complexity of 0 into 1 into zeros into ones into two into limit will not work for 1000 so i have to optimize my time also but whenever the concept of optimization comes in picture i will have to try again there's a less possibilities of optimizing the top down code so i will have to convert this code to a bottom up code so let's just try to simply again i have kept this bottom code or sorry i have kept this top down code on the right side i will use the exact same top down code to convert to use this code to convert to a bottom up code let's see in front of eyes how i will do it so Firstly, you always know that you should let we always initialize our DP with a default value of zero minus one. We do in that top down case just because to have a check. But here, because you will be adding the count, so I have to initialize with a default value of zero because we are adding the count. Let's say if you would have been multiplying, so I would have initialized with a value of one, which is the default value. Now let's come on and compare side by side. So you realize that I have a zero and a one. No matter whosoever can come first, whosoever can come next. So, at the exact same stuff, I told that, okay, try for, again, make sure I will follow the same naming conventions in the optimized version also. So, please don't be confused. I have tried for all the count of zeros starting from a Z equal to 1 to Z is less than equal to zeros. Same way, I will try for all the count of 1s starting from O equal to 1, which is the O, O for 1. Although, you might say, Aryan, it is a very bad naming convention but this is very this is very cute simple one else the code would have been very long just for you to even understand how it is being transformed cool i will try for o equal to one to o is less than equal to one now this is because i know that i had my zero and one in the picture so i will have to try for the for loop trying for the entire count so this will be the for loop for that now inside that for loop i realize i will have these conditions i will have another for loop for my count so write the exact same stuff i will write the another for loop for the count for count is equals to one count is less than again, exact same stuff as you can see count is less than equal to minimum of zero comma limits count plus plus write the exact same stuff zero again for me zero is the current zero which i have got comma limit and then count plus plus then then what then what simply answer is equals to solve for zero minus count one and then as i have placed a zero at this location so this constant element will be a zero and then ultimately go so on and so forth so what is this answer this answer is you are saying that you have placed a zero at this location so i am saying i have placed a zero at this location i am saying i have placed a zero at this location for the current count of zeros and ones again it is same way for saying answer answer is nothing but zero and ones whatsoever you have currently so for the current count of zero and ones i know that i have placed a zero here so the answer whatsoever i have got is after is for placing a zero at this location so for placing a zero and you know you are adding the answer with itself so you can simply see zero z zero zero i am adding the answer with itself it is simply saying answer answer is equals to answer plus something or was it something something was zero minus count which is z minus count and then and then going on and checking for the simple o for me o is one but this was only the case when i know that my consecutive element which i got previously previously was not a zero which means it will be a one so i have the exact same stuff i went on previously which is z minus count o is representing the one for me which o is representing the one for me then i went on back 
and again this is this is simply saying going on back going on back again you have to understand the root of the how bp what this existing code is doing else you'll be simply very very easily confused you will simply say iron zero is here so i should add a zero here bro you did not understand what this thing was doing this thing was saying bro i'm trying to find the answer for placing a zero at this location as i will place a zero at this location so it will go on and carry forward a zero but i also know that i have placed these many consecutive numbers of zeros i can only place that considering the previously i had a one and not a zero so previously i had a one and not a zero i placed these many count number of zeros so i will simply get a zero ending right here so zero ones zero minus count one and ending with a one previously at the zero minus count so that is how i simply converted this case this entire case to this condition for for loop same way converting the next case again exactly same you will see answer answer is for ending at one i will use zero and again existing zero and one ending at one so you can simply see zero and one ending at a one which means consecutive ones i have taken again the same i have to add in my answer itself because you can see answer equal to answer plus i am doing then i will go and check for zero one minus count but that is only possible only when the existing number previously was not a one which means it is a zero so i can only do it zero one minus count only the existing number which is the previous number is actually a zero so i converted this also now you can simply see that my code is simply converted which means i have converted this entire main case to my actual these three for loops okay so you might be thinking okay th things are done but bro you did not take in consideration the base case what was happening so you will see i have chosen to do something with the base case but how would i know it i bro simply saying how would you know that what base case would have been applied here it was very easy because you know that you are simply reducing your zeros and ones ultimately when both of them reaches the end you know you have to return a one and technically also you can simply see that both are actually reducing so you know that things are going well in our case what will do the base case you know that okay your z minus count for any number of zeros again remember make sure your o is from one one to one same way your this z is from one to zero and this z minus count it can be a zero it can be a zero it can be a zero so that can be a base case for us so we realized again make sure this is the only thing which can actually reach to your base case reach to your base case else everything is same everything is inside the for loop this is the, these are all the for loop cases these are all the for loop cases these can only reach to a reach to my very base case so i have to make sure as soon as they reach their minimum value i should return something which will actually help me adding and saying now i have got one good array what i will do for that i i realize that i have used this and this in my these two conditions so i know that these both can reach to zero so this can reach to zero this can reach to zero when they will reach to zero we say okay it's a good condition and i should return one array that's a valid case for me so the same i will do and again how they will reach to zero just try for all the possibilities when this thing is a zero which means you will say okay for the one you have try for all the ones so for all the ones i'm trying okay as you can see for all the o's this is a o this is a o for all the o's i'm trying again as i'm saying i'm trying for all the o's make sure you can only place consecutive number of o's limit times so make sure that part also that you can only place the consecutive number of o's limit times zeros ones limit times so you will simply say dp of zeros o o and then ending with a one it will be a one because this was a base case for our actual case of for loop same way for this also if this is a zero so this is a zero here z will be from one to the limit again z zero zero will be a one so these two will be our base case that will work and simply convert our top down approach 
टू आर सिंपल बॉटम अप अप्रोच टू आर सिंपल बॉटम अप अप्रोच एंड दिस एक्सैक्टली अदर थिंग्स विल मेन एक्सैक्टली सेम दिस इज द बॉटम अप अप्रोच exactly same is the only change is i initialize that with the zero but when you are about to return earlier what you were saying was i will r in i will simply start my recursion is as in i will simply ask for a solve function saying that okay bro try for a zero try for a one when the previous was nothing when the previous was nothing which means it can be anything anything so in our case I cannot take any of the thing as previous. I am saying I have done and computed, and I am saying this is computed in the very end. In the very end, when the array is built, now I am saying okay, I have zero number of zeros in the array. I have one number of ones in the array. Now, what are all the possibilities? So the end can be either a one or the end can either be a zero. So I have asked my recursion or I asked my DP, bro, zero number of zeros. One number of ones ending the entire array is ending with a zero, or again, or you have zero number of zeros, one number of ones, and the entire array is ending with a one. Again, you have to take the summation of all the cases. So just simply take the summation of them, which is both can be there, and then get the answer by doing mod at every step. Make sure mod at every step is important for you. Now, still you will see the time complexity is still the same. Because you can simply see, I am iterating on my zero, one, and my limit. So it is still be zero, one limit, and multiplied by two for one. As you can see, one case you are doing for ones, and one case you are doing for zeros. Space, okay, space is also still the same. But Arun, what was the use of it? The use of it is now I can actually see what was happening, and I can actually improvise at time. How I will do it? I will simply go back and look at the exact same code, and I will see how to improvise it again. Remember. the complexity of the hard hard problem was simply saying your 0 and 1 both are less than 1000 so if both are less than 1000 and by our simple follow we know that this will be 1 e6 i will try for both the possibilities so i'll multiply that by 2 so it will be 1 e6 multiplied by 2 if i will add one more 1000 which is for limit it will exceed so i have technically eliminate this for loop i cannot use this for loop inside these two for loops again i can use these two for loops that's okay but i cannot use this for loop this is not at all permissible i have to somehow remove it how i will remove it that's a question how i have to figure this out that i have to simply remove it so let's see again i have to remove this for loop firstly understand what this for loop is doing If I just again closely make sure to just take a snapshot because I cannot show everything in the entire one page because your screen will be small. So so take a snapshot for him and that keep it aside. I'm going to write in a copy because I'll show you exactly what's happening. So for a specific Z and O again, I will represent my Z with a Z and O. It looks like a zero, so I will just put it a as a as a danda right. So I just represent that with a Z and O. For a Z and O, let's see what this for loop is doing. What this for loop is doing? This for loop simply says, okay, that for a specific Z and O, make sure Z and O for a zero value. Again, for this representation, I have represented with a here. I have represented here itself. I am going and trying again. This you will see that this is the exact same. I was simply adding every values in myself. I was adding every 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 value in myself. So initially it was a zero, and thus I just kept on adding all these for loop values in myself. So okay, again I am not concerned about this because it is just showing I am adding things in myself. That's it, and I will do it separately. I will add everything in this pink thing, this pink thing. What I have to add technically is add this. What is this? If I just see iteratively, okay, when count is one, count is two, count is three. Let's imagine virtually I have taken the limit of four. So what this DP values will actually go about? This will go and say, okay, DP of z minus one when the count is one, z minus two when the count is two, z minus three when the count is three, z minus four when the count is four, and this is the max limit. Make sure. Let's imagine my zeros are let's say eight or nine, but limit. I am bounded my by limit then. Okay. So technically, you are trying for z minus one, o, z minus two, o, z minus three, o, 
z minus 4 o in let's for now forget this third dimension i am showing you in a 2d matrix for you to make sure you imagine everything exactly what i am trying to show you so that's the reason i represented my zero again this zero is this specific zero this zero this one is this specific one so keeping this third dimension on this side i have showed you the other two dimensions on this side if i have to find for a z comma zero sorry z comma o i have to find which means i am trying for a z minus one z minus two which means row minus one row minus two row minus three and row minus four so i'm going row wise above so if i'm going row wise above so z minus one z minus two z minus three z minus four so as to find the answer for z comma o for a zero dimension i am trying for z minus one z minus two z minus three z minus four for a specific again for a specific first para for a specific dimension of a one make sure you know and you understand this that i did exactly same the what the for loop was trying to trying to <laughs> trying to do for me now now let's see that again if the z would have been the next z as i know that my z will actually increase so it will go and try for the next specific z let's name that next again i know you know that the next specific z will be a z plus one will be a z plus one but for my and your safety as in like for my and your uh, understanding i have to get as a z dash again make sure this is the next z so this is a z dash make sure this is the next z i am saying this again because in future i will replace this z dash with a z what will happen internally is this will become a z minus one this will become a z minus two this will become a z minus three and so on and so forth so it's a reason i have showed you that this is actually the next z cool but i have right now shown as a z dash same o will remain as it is why are you, you have taken z, z dash and how will i think it i just simply wanted to try and see that what all common stuff i can figure out and use in my algorithm because i know this is a for loop for loop is a normal loop which repeats stuff and i am analyzing this stuff and i am trying maybe i can not use this for loop so i have to somehow see what all things are repeating so it is a reason i try to be consistent with again this is the existing existing diagram we draw so i try to be consistent with this existing diagram and you will see that okay all these are consistent roughly consistent the third dimension you can see it is changing but more or less it is roughly consistent so if i ask you if i ask you if you add a new z which is z dash in our case what will be the dp value for it same way if our for loop will have computed and told us that it will be z dash o for a zero dimension again z dash o for zero dimension i will simply kept on adding a z dash minus one z dash minus two which means just okay above 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 four times because the limit was a limit was a four so i did exact same stuff for this z dash of zero with a zero dimension z dash o for zero dimension i will try for these four values with the dimension of one cool so i did exact same stuff it will be dp of z o one dp of z minus one o one dp of z minus two o one dp of z minus three o one i as a, as you can see i tried for all these four values cool now just look at both these parallelly and can you infer something i can easily i know i'm not sure you can do or not but you can easily see that this exact same stuff it is repeating here also which means that i want to replace this pink value i can simply replace this with this dp of z o zero zero dimension minus dp of z minus 4 again i will show you what this minus 4 means but technically right now you must have realized this minus 4 have come in because of the because of the limit of 4 which you had taken because you know that you can only take in the last four elements so the existing previous fourth element will be this element itself cool okay come on coming on back so this entire pink portion will be dp of z o zero dimension minus dp of z minus four 
O and one dimension. Okay. So I replace this pink portion with the exact same pink portion I derived here, and I replace this with dp of z O and zero dimension minus dp of z minus four O and one dimension. Now simply place it here. Simply replace this entire stuff with these two values, and I will simply get okay. I simply place a dp of zero. Sorry, this is dp of z O and one dimension dp of z o and zero dimension and this minus value of dp of z minus 4 o and one dimension now let's see that what how my z dash and z related so if you remembered i told you that z dash is just after my z so if i technically now about to place a z here so this z existing z will become a z minus one so i know one thing for sure what is this so I, I know one thing for sure that again, if you have been liking this video so far, please like it. That will be very helpful. Now, uh, sorry, two to seven between. So I know that I will replace it with a Z. I will replace with the Z minus one. Replace this with the Z minus one. Replace this again. Replace this with the Z minus one. So you realized that your DP of Z O zero dimension is dp of z minus 1 o 1 dimension dp of z minus 1 o 1 zero dimension and then this portion again this portion represents that i am just trying to remove the existing limit so this was actually my limit this was actually my limit so i came down to this specific formula this specific formula which ultimately told me that what i should do i should to find the value of dp of z o and zero dimension i should go and ask for dp of z minus one o and one dimension dp of z minus one o and zero dimension and if my z is more than limit which means i have extended my limit i have gone beyond my limit then make sure to subtract whatsoever you have left in the limit as you can simply see if i go back on the diagram which i made so i can only take at max four elements because the limit says i can take at max four so if let's say i would have said okay what if i had only three ones so okay take three subtract nothing if i had only two okay take two subtract nothing but you remembered i had actually five i had actually five okay okay sorry i had if i go back i had actually five in the top of this z dash so i have to take only four so as my z number of zeros are more than my limit so simply subtract this one right so it's the reason i have just reached to a conclusion that okay if my z is more than the limit then from this existing dp of z zero z dash again this is existing existing same from this subtract a dp of z minus one minus limit o one the o one exactly same again you are doing a minus and everything is in the modulo basis modulo basis so when you do a modulo subtraction so how it goes about is existing code minus for sure you are doing as you will have to do a modulo so please do make sure to add a modulo and then do a modulo this is the, how the modulo subtraction works cool now we will simply come on and do the exact same stuff for the next again you saw that this existing for loop i converted to a two conditions and that is it so i transform this for loop to these two conditions same way i will transform this next for loop of ones to again two conditions and how will this again you saw that i was going on to z minus one z minus two which is vertically i was going above row above same way as you can simply iterate on this i am going one column behind one column behind one column behind one column behind up till the limit and that is how you can also derive for yourself but exactly same code will look for this once also let's see the code again i did not change anything again you can see everything remain as it is everything remain as it is everything remain as it is the only thing changed here is firstly again i will show you exactly same stuff see this portion of code when you are finding dp of z o and zero dimension so i will show you okay sorry dp of z o and zero dimension exact same portion i have written here and corresponding to this what if the z is more than limit this code is here and the exact same code i have written for one which is z o and one dimension this is the exact same code of one how the code of zero is written and what if the o is more than my limit then same code for him 
So this is the code for Z, which is zero. And this is the code for one. So this is the only okay, only change I did in this entire code. And that is how you can simply achieve your most optimal time complexity, which is zero into one into two. It is same way saying I kind of use my prefix sum concept because I was roughly taking the prefix sum of this range. Then I did a sliding window, which means my window shifted. And now I'm taking the prefix sum of this range. So it's a mixture of prefix sum, sliding window and your DP approaches. So that's how again space will still remain same because you have not improvised on any space whatsoever. But you have improvised time and that again this question was solved by only 43 people in the entire contest. It was actually a hard question. So you know that this if you had watched so far it would have been worth it. But still I will highly recommend because this notes take a lot of time to make as you can easily see that things are very 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 much needs to be written and that's the reason like to show everything in one page is very hard although we are building the website codewitharyan.com which will be live soon in which every of these notes will be visible to you but it is very hard to place somewhere else where you can see it right now it's the only reason we are building it again if you have liked the video it is 107 if you don't believe me i will show you my phone my phone is there no worries um this i can show but do not view this okay it's 107 so yeah that's it thanks for watching goodbye take care bye, -bye. 58 minutes i don't know what this is but yeah so actually a hard question and i hope you guys got it bye bye take care